think when we uh, when we look back on this game, it could be pivotal, could be crucial in the uh, whole way that the season will play out. Obviously, I hope that's not the case. We really deserve some luck at Villa over the past three years. Uh, just bizarre set of results that we've had there. Draws, draws, draws. And then what feels like a harsh defeat. John Egan, was it a red card? Was it denying a goal-scoring opportunity? These sort of things can be debated till the cows come home. You know, He did put his arm across Watkins. Watkins also put his arm back across John Egan. I was quite surprised it was given after the VAR, but also at the same time, watching football as long as I have, I wasn't that surprised. So when that had happened, you probably look at it and say John Egan doesn't really need to be uh, grappling and wrestling like that when he is uh, with the striker, particularly as uh, Rammer's position was was quite good in that sweeper-keeper role, and I always felt like he was going to get there first, but <laughs> you never know. Maybe Watkins really is that fast. We will never know. So that was disappointing, and of course it completely changed the game. I like to think that 11 v 11, we could have given Villa a really good game, and I was fairly confident before that we would have actually taken all three points. We're now in a little tricky spot because we've got a really hard run of our fixtures in October, but I've got nothing but faith. If anyone can get the best out of these players, it is Chris Wilder. We do need to strengthen. I also want to mention uh, John Lundstrom. I know a lot of fans have gone his back. Unless you're actually in the contract negotiation talks, none of us have a clue what's really been asked for, what he's really demanding. And I think if we get on his back, he won't play better. So he tried pretty hard. OK, Mr. Penalty. Anyone can miss a penalty. It wasn't a great penalty. It was a good height for a keeper. But you saw even in the dying minutes, he was tracking back and throwing his body to uh, defend and to keep the blades in the game. I think that his ability is up right up there. It's, you know, He always plays as well as he can. He gives as much as he possibly can. I don't think he's shirking anything. I don't think he's being lazy. I genuinely think he's trying. And uh, perhaps it just isn't working quite as well as it was last season for John Lundstrom. And we'll see. I really hope he does sign a new contract and kicks on from where he was last season because you know, we need goals and he got them last season. I believe he can get them this season. So that's one thing I would just temper it with and say, Blades, don't get on Lunny's back. It won't help anything. Good afternoon, Ian in Canada. Um, Post-match thoughts. 18 minutes without yeah, a full side. Not good. Sending off, I felt a little bit harsh, but, you know, these are the way things go. On a positive side, Burke looked tremendous. Ampida looked solid when he came on. And even after the Lunny miss, I think the guy put himself about. I know he's been getting a lot of criticism recently, um, but you go to the last minute of the game, uh, clearance off the line. Difficult to see where we go from here. Um, obviously, long... Uh, run of games coming that are going to be difficult especially the Leeds game um, plan B I don't know, are we going to get a striker in is that going to make a big difference um, that's now five games in the Premier League beaten um, <sighs> what's it like to be a blade um, we just got to look positive, we've got to go forward, we've got to trust in Chris Wilder and the boys and hopefully things will go right um, could be a struggle Difficult to say at this point. To be fair, we are only two games in. But uh, for me, let's look forward and hopefully things will turn around. Hope the Blades. So Chris Wilder's wait for his 100th win as Blades boss continues after our unfortunate visit to Villa Park. Uh, Villa, who shouldn't be in the league, as we know, when they stayed up by the skin of the teeth and a ghost goal, ridiculous situation. Spent loads of money again trying to stay up by doing that crazy way of going about the business uh, and yeah not a happy place to go a couple of changes to the starting lineup Norwood and McBurney out Norwood I think possibly because he was quite poor against Wolves with his dead balls at least uh, McBurney possibly a tactical change or we know he's not completely fit yet still would prefer to have Norwood in the side though I think we're a better side with him a bit surprised to see him left out um, after 10 minutes we're 1-0 down not ascending off for me um, I think Egan gets the wrong side of him, um, which didn't help. He's got arms, arms all over him, but Watkins has got his arms all over Egan as well. But Ramos is closing down the space. I think he would have got there. And there's also another defender making up ground as well. So it seemed harsh, as we've seen as well. Linesman flagged for the throwing. Referee miles away made the call. No pitch side monitor. Um, no looking at that. Just bizarre circumstances again. Blades falling foul of VAR again, potentially. 
Um, but I think, you know, we still, if, if Egan had let him go, running through, we got wrong side of him, yes, but let him run through. He scores maybe, 1-0 down with 11 men, with 10 minutes gone. We've still got a chance. But actually, uh, one, we'd, we'd get down to 10 men, 1-0 down. That was it, really. Game was pretty much over. Um, secondly, oh, so then the, then the penalty. Um, I think it was a pen. Um, I think it was only a booking as well. Don't actually agree with Wilder that it should have been a sending off. I think he did actually try and get the ball. Um, from what I've not scrutinised it from what I saw. It looked like it was a genuine attempt. But, you know, amazing pass from Burke. He had a really good game. Basham, nearly had, nearly had another Basham arriving moment. He runs the length of the pitch. Um, gets that penalty. Maybe, maybe would have converted it if it had been clipped. I converted the chance, I mean. Um, but why is Lunny taking a penalty? He's never taken one for as far as I know. Um, I think some, I think that just said it was his first penalty he's ever taken in the league. Um, Berger, on the same pitch, took one midweek in the cup, scored it, great penalty. Why is, I mean, and I'm guessing Lunny, he, 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 was on the, he was on the dead balls in the match, played very well with the dead balls, some good deliveries. Maybe that's why he took a pen. I think there's an element of him being brave, to be fair. So you know, he's, he's had some flack about the contract situation. He was at fault for the first goal against Wolves. So maybe he thought he could redeem himself by scoring the pen. But for me, he shouldn't have taken it. Um, maybe even bring Sharp on. That was our chance to get back in the game with down to 10 men. Bring Sharp on to convert the penalty. It's a bit, just seemed a bit crazy. Um, but then we, we defended resolutely for the rest of the match. Um, apart from Ender being out jumped for, the, for, the, uh, for their goal. Um, but yeah, we played very well, really. I thought individuals, though, Fleck, very quiet. Surprisingly, Osborne, I think, was right to come on. He showed a lot of energy and endeavour. Berger, very quiet for him. I'm not sure. And he seemed to, seemed to want more time on the ball than he had. A couple of good runs into the box, but just not as good as he's been recently. Um, Basham and Burke worked hard all match. Fantastic. Lunny as well, I'd say, to an extent. You know, he's, he's been the uh, source of a lot of frustration recently, but he, he put a shift in. Like I said, very good with the dead balls as well. Um, and the right at the end with the last ditch clearance showed that he was still, you know, was trying to get involved and, you know, it must have been absolutely knackered. Uh, Villa, well, they were crap. I just, you know, another team, your you, you opposition's 10 men down, uh, sorry, one man down, 10 minutes in, you'll be peppering the box, you'll be trying to tie them out. They didn't seem to have a plan. And I'm actually more worried as a Villa fan than as a Blades fan after that result because, you know, a lot of talent there, a lot of money spent, and they didn't seem to have a plan about how they're going to play at all. Um, so now we face Leeds with no Egan. Hopefully Ampadu is going to be coming, coming in. He was very good when he came on. Please not Jags. Um, and we need, really need to win this one. Then we've got Fulham. Again, we really need to win that one. If, if we come away with a draw against Leeds, we have to beat Fulham. Because then we've got a very bad one afterwards. Um, all in all, not a great result. We've got to stop making it hard for ourselves though. Shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, if, if, we, if we cut out these individual mistakes again. Play the way we play, we're going to be fine, but it's just a frustrating start. But again, only two matches in. Keep the faith and let's do one over Leeds. Come on, the Blades. Hey, Blades fans, Robert here with another match reaction from the US. Uh, another disappointing game for Sheffield United. Um, really, three big moments that uh, stood out in today's game. Um, first one was the red card, uh, John Egan getting sent off in the 11th minute. Uh, really disappointing for him. Um, I personally didn't feel that uh, it deserved a red card, maybe a yellow at best, but uh, still, as a player, you don't want to be putting yourself in a situation where uh, the referee can determine your fate and uh, you know make a decision that really changes the game. Um, but despite that, uh, United actually looked really good. Uh, in the first half defensively, we uh, didn't allow Villa to have any really good chances, um, just long crosses into the box that uh, we could easily clear. Um, and then we actually did get one really good chance uh, ourselves in the first half. Um, Ollie Burke uh, moving down the left side, uh, getting the ball uh, into the box to Basham and then uh, Basham getting taken down to win a penalty. So everybody's really excited. Uh, Lundstrom goes up to take it and unfortunately just puts it in a spot that the goalkeeper can easily get to. Uh, as a player taking a penalty, you want to be a little bit uh, smarter with where you're putting it. That's probably one of the worst spots to, to put the ball when you're taking a penalty. Um, and then obviously the rest of us fans can debate for days whether Lundstrom should have been the guy taking the penalty. Um, but without Norwood and without uh, Billy Sharp on the field, uh, it, there's no real easy decision, uh, real easy choice rather.
uh, for who should be taking that. Um, a lot of us would have liked to see Berger, including myself, uh, seeing as he had a really good take on Thursday against Burnley in the League Cup game. But uh, unfortunately, Lundstrom missed, and it's nil-nil at halftime. Um, now we go to the second half. Again, we're pr looking pretty solid defensively, uh, not allowing Villa too many chances. Um, and then, unfortunately, from a corner, we uh, concede another goal. It's, uh, you know, it was a good, solid header by Ming over to Kansa uh, to put that one in. Uh, not a lot Ramsdale could do. I think Enda Stevens did his best to get up as high as he could to try to block uh, the header that actually went in for the goal. Um, but disappointing that we couldn't track Ming as he was running through our defense. Um, I think Jack O'Connell was the one who was tracking him, but then he tripped over Lundstrom right before. So again, another one of those, like, you're looking back and why are we conceding a goal from that type of a set piece? But uh, at the same time, that's two now in two games. So maybe that's a, something that Chris Wilder needs to look at in training, needs to get the guys out there practicing uh, defending set pieces. So, um, And then after that, the game kind of opened up a bit. Uh, we made a couple more offensively-minded subs, got Osborne on, uh, got uh, McBurney on, uh, and they actually looked solid going forward. We created a couple chances, um, but nothing came of it, uh, and the game ended 1-0. So disappointing overall on the day, uh, again, to have lost two games in the first uh, two matches of the season. Uh, we really got to step it up uh, if we're going to have a chance to beat Leeds. We know Leeds can score goals. They've scored seven from their first two already. So uh, if we have any chance of winning that game, we're going to have to defend uh, our hearts out uh, without Egan, who will be suspended because of the red card, and we're going to have to figure out, figure out a way to score goals. So looking forward, forward to that game on Sunday. I'm looking forward to giving you guys more match reactions, hopefully some positive ones here uh, soon. So everybody take care and have a good one. I've been asked by Nick to give a rundown of my thoughts from a match reaction from last night against Aston Villa. I didn't think it was a sending off. I thought they both had a hold of each other, even probably even more than Watkins, but I don't think you can be sending players off from that far out. Um, in the same breath, I thought if Egan's going to be getting sent off for that, then Matt Target should have probably been sent off for the foul on Basham. Even though the contact was minimal, it's still, in theory, denying a goal-scoring opportunity. So if you're going to give one, you've got to give the other. The penalty miss were just a good save. People slagging Lundstrom off, I've seen already saying he shouldn't be taking it if he don't want to play for the club, but Wilder has faith in him, so we should all have faith in him. The positives to come out from the game, uh, George Baldock thought he played really well. Sanderberg had a, a decent-ish game. I feel like he'd have controlled it a little bit more if we had more men in the middle of the park. I didn't think after the sending off it was the right type of game for McGoldrick because he was having to come too deep and then you were losing separation between your strikers and your midfielders it didn't feel right for him to be on the pitch so the sub when they brought Ampadu on was good I probably would have left Basham at the back just because he's a bit taller and I'd have put Ampadu in the middle because he's got a better range with his feet although watching the Basham Bambi run up and down were quite exciting to be honest in the middle which is something we've not had for a while we've not had anyone who's prepared just to gallop forward I mean Fleck does it but not in the same way that Basham does it. He puts himself about in a far more physical presence. The penalty being a prime example of that. I thought we dictated how they played pretty well as well. In, com in consideration the fact that we had a less man. We never looked outnumbered. We never looked scared. We never looked shot. The goal, people saying that Ramsdale should have done better. But it were right in corner and there. It were like... Just a soft cushioned head. And anyone would have been happy to score that. Like, I, I don't think anyone will get in towards it. And I'm not going to compare him to a previous goalkeeper and say, "Oh, you just saved it." But I don't think, I don't think anyone's saving that. Really, it was just, it was nice. It was just soft. It was cushioned. It was low. It bounced. Perfect header. Really. Definite positives to take. I mean, Aston Villa. Are shit, let's be honest. They, they spent money. They still don't like a good team. Ming's played all right. Him that scored played all right. Grealish were a bit dog. I mean, if he's worth eighty million, I dread to think what some of our players are worth because he just weren't good. We we'll probably caught him on a good day, being the first game back, but we'll still come back to Sheffield with no points. All in all, happy with performance. Referee were poor. Linesman didn't give anything. 
Take it on chin and move on. Leeds on Sunday. Let's, let's see how many goals they can score because they don't seem to want to stop scoring. But we just need to find it. We need to buy a goal scorer. It just pace, power, goals. Just desperate. Morning, Blades. Match report Aston Villa. What can I say? The villains. Yes, again. <sighs> Graham Scott, referee and his assistant referees who really didn't assist him at all especially when it came to the red card that Egan got against Watkins it was given because an attacking player was denied a scoring chance but the ball was three, three or four metres in front Ramsdale was coming out so I don't think he would have scored free kick maybe and a yellow card Lundstrom got a yellow card for a foul on Hallahan in the second half McGann did exactly the same thing on Stevens, and nothing was done literally right in front of the assistant referee who did nothing so we were down to 10 men and we pulled away Burke ran beautifully up put a brilliant ball through to Basham who was tripped by target the ball again a couple of, uh, couple of yards in front maybe one one yard, two yards. Target never attempted to go for the ball. Trip Basham gets a yellow card. He should have been sent off. That would have made it equal. So, Lundstrom goes straight to penalty. Hits it well. Martinez dives the right way and saves it. Wasn't going to be our night, was it? But the lads played well. Villa attacked, attacked, attacked. And we defended, defended, defended. Until the goal. Corner came over. Mings back at it and there was Conser to bash it in but Ramsdale was off his line why didn't we have defenders on each post maybe it would have been avoided maybe it wouldn't have gone in but I'm not feeling it for Ramsdale um, a couple of the sa couple of the saves he did yesterday well sorry attempted saves he's, he's nowhere near the ball I know Henderson was a good goalkeeper and I know we spent 18 million on him on Ramsdale but I don't think he's worth his money my opinion they did well um, could have been two in the 90, 91st minute when Greeley took a shot but he was uh, cut off by Lundstrom again who had a brilliant match forget the yellow card forget missing the penalty the whole team was really good I felt safe I might get him taken off um, and then McBurney coming on but we needed an attacker I see why Wilder did it we need to get somebody up front to try and score a goal but he didn't really do a lot um, Sanderberg he had a he had a shot not quite on target but he tried but he was, he was, he was facing the wrong way all in all I think we were robbed um, robbed by the reason of it should have been done 10 men equal when Basham was brought down. That's my report on it. No doubt Wilder will have a lot of things to say about it. But, you know, onwards and, up, onwards and upwards. Let's see what happens against our Yorkshire rivals, Leeds, at home. Fingers crossed. Bye, guys. UTB. Good morning, Blades from Tampa Bay. Had about 18 hours to digest what we just saw yesterday. I have to say, I'm really looking forward to a match that's not effectively changed and over by the first 10 minutes, because that's what's happened the first two times here. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Never a red card. I don't even think it's a yellow. I don't even think it's a foul. Uh, like Wilder said, linesman never flagged. You know, you don't want to play the old poor Sheffield United card, but if that's Van Dyke and Watkins, if it's Maguire and Watkins, the red card is never getting brandished. All we heard about this year was that refs can check the pitch side monitor, they're being encouraged to check the pitch side monitor, and Graham Scott never goes over to the pitch side monitor, and if you want to just pour a bit of salt in the wound, it's Mike Dean in the VAR booth, and I don't think any more needs to be said about that. Performance-wise, I don't think you can slate any player on that pitch. It's it's 
troubling to concede a set piece goal. Um, you know, Mings beats, I think it was O'Connell at the front post, Consa gets above Stevens. You know, you're going to get the old, could have could Henderson have saved that? I don't think so. I think it's just a great angled header. It's one of those that's just got everybody going the wrong direction. Hard to judge how we perform as a team, how we go forward as a team, when you're playing with 10 men and you're playing with Ali Burke alone at the top of the pitch for, you know, uh, ever since McGoldrick went off, so about the better part of an hour. You do what most 10-man teams do. You sit back, you defend, and you try to hit him on the counter, and obviously a great piece of play that led to the penalty. I've got no issues with Lundstrom wanting the ball and stepping up and taking it. Uh, I think if you really look at the replay, it's a good save from Martinez. Lundstrom could have obviously placed it a bit higher, but a lot of people on social media... Uh, slating Lundstrom and really raking him over the coals. And my position has always been the same, which is if Lundstrom had signed a two-year contract last week, nobody would be saying a word about his performance today. I think for me, uh, our left side is what was a bit worrying. I think Enda Stevens and John Fleck were a bit anonymous for me. They didn't do much going forward. Obviously, Stevens beaten for the goal. So that's just something to keep an eye on. The Berga... You know, he shows command of the ball. I think he can drive the team forward. You know, he really stepped in and put a good tackle in on Jack Grealish at some point. But then a few passes that he was giving away too easily. Solid from Bash, as usual. Uh, asked to do a million different things and does them all with no complaint. And his usual high energy. So, it's not all doom and gloom. I don't think it's a case of second season syndrome. But I do think it's a case of we need to go out and perform against Leeds. And really, we need to score goals. Three points is important, but I'd take a point if we can score two goals and show that we've got some attacking instinct and prowess. Deadline's coming up. Uh, whether it's Brewster, whether it's the lad from Arsenal, whether it's somebody we don't know about. I've heard Josh King. I've heard Dwight Gale. Uh, I do think we just need more bodies in, and I think we need to get Moose healthy. Because what you're seeing is we need to get some pace at the top of the pitch to stretch our opponents. And we need we need our midfield to really make sure they're providing good service to whoever's up front as well. So that's going to be something to watch. But I don't think it's time to hit the panic button. I don't think we'll be ninth this season. But, um, you know, give me about 13th or 14th. And, you know, let's consolidate and really just kick on and prove that we're a Premier League club that's going to be here for a long time. So... Roll on Sunday, roll on the first Premier League Yorkshire Derby in who knows how long. And fingers crossed that we keep 11 men on the pitch and that we don't let two goals in in the first 10 minutes. All right, hope everybody has a great week. Nick, hope your Achilles heals up quick and you're back to normal in no time. Take care, everybody. Look at that ping from Norwood. Makes other teams look no good. Yeah. We've got a team full of leaders. Alan Hill, Chris Wilder, taught us. Right. Yeah, there was us on the tour bus. Yeah. Look how many goals Billy scored us. It's beautiful downtown Bromley. We are the boys from Shoreham.